the United States Navy is at risk. Right now, this very minute. Wave after wave of unwanted intrusions capable of striking anywhere on the planet, including right here at home. The probes are invisible, but they could potentially cripple our forces with as much devastation as any bomb or missile. This is all occurring in cyberspace, the worldwide domain where communications, intelligence gathering, kinetic operations, logistics, and command and control can be threatened at network speed. But the U.S. Navy stands ready to repel this threat and to maintain superiority in this new operational domain. The cyber warriors of U.S. Fleet Cyber Command and U.S. 10th Fleet help operate and assure the security of Navy networks around the world, providing powerful cyber capabilities necessary for warfighting superiority across the full spectrum of military operations. Any entity with access to the Internet can operate in cyberspace, including criminals, terrorists, hacktivists, and nations large and small. As vast as the Internet has become, cyberspace is even larger, with virtually all commerce and communications passing through electronic networks. From GPS systems to wireless phones, credit card scanners to automatic climate control systems, and the U.S. power grid, all are vulnerable to cyber attack, and so is our military. Each day, the Department of Defense alone receives six million probes. The traditional operational domains of maritime, land, air, and space have definite boundaries that separate one from the other. But a fifth operational domain, cyberspace, crosses all domains. Cyberspace is where the battles of the future will be won or lost. Tenth Fleet is no stranger to unconventional missions. In World War II, submarines were the new menace, changing the very conventions of naval combat. Tenth Fleet was formed to counter that threat, unifying intelligence and operations in one command for the first time. Today's Tenth Fleet continues that tradition. The Chief of Naval Operations established U.S. Fleet Cyber Command and recommissioned U.S. 10th Fleet as the Navy's central operational authority for cyber, electronic warfare, networks, cryptology, signals intelligence, and information operations. This represents a landmark transition in the evolution of naval warfare, bringing information to the forefront of the Navy's 21st century arsenal. Almost every operation on board a naval vessel functions in cyberspace. It is the primary medium for Navy command and control, communications, computer, combat systems, and intelligence capabilities. All these systems must function effectively, even in the face of degradation or outright attack. That's the job of U.S. Fleet Cyber Command and U.S. 10th Fleet. To assure command and control, the Navy must maintain dynamic situational awareness. This is constant and total awareness in real time of the state of our networks and communications capabilities. I'm seeing a drop in capacity centered in the Typhoon off Japan. We need to reroute our traffic until we can make sure it's reliable. An extension of dynamic situational awareness is dynamic network defense. The ability to proactively counter intrusions or hostile acts against our networks before they disrupt our operations and to seamlessly maintain continuity of command and control. Battle watch, Captain. I'm detecting a large amount of traffic flowing into the Fifth Fleet Mock. Sir, our network sensor grid is indicating a malicious signature there as well. I believe they're probing our premise router and are getting ready to launch a denial of service attack. Block at incoming source IP address and have intel pass at the U.S. Cybercom J2. Yes, sir. Sir, we got him. Good work. Dynamic network defense and situational awareness are necessary to enable 10th Fleet's third responsibility, full-spectrum cyberspace operations. This refers to a wide range of non-kinetic effects that can be used independently or to complement kinetic actions. Cyberspace operations can be as effective as a bomb or missile, but can be conducted from virtually anywhere on the planet, in real time. 
The sailors of 10th Fleet are cyber warriors, conducting operations in a critical modern domain. They're a force multiplier for both kinetic and non-kinetic naval operations, delivering timely mission critical information and capabilities to our commanders and operating forces worldwide. We're actually out here uh, performing flight tests for the F-35C to open up the flight envelope and see what we can learn to get the F-35 ready for carrier evolution launch and recovery. The difficulties of maintaining this aircraft on Nimitz is that, one, it's the first time we've ever brought this type of aircraft aboard. With the training that we go through, yeah, we have to go very slow to ensure that every step, every step is done safely. Uh, the sailors on the Nimitz were prepared that we had a small contingent come out to us in Pax River, Maryland, and we provided a small cadre course for the individuals to learn about the F-35, uh, taxi and towing, learning all the intricacies of the F-35 that no others would see unless they were inside the program. Every moment being on the deck, working on the aircraft, uh, being around, working with the crew, bringing the aircraft up and down on the elevators, I think every day is new new challenge, new excitement, and we learn something new every single day, every time we move the aircraft. Every moment we're learning something new about the aircraft and how it interacts with the flight deck crew and the aircraft carrier itself, so it's pretty tough to learn on the fly, but that's what we're doing out there. That's what we've trained for on back at Pax River for the past five years for the aircraft. And I know everybody had the same feeling for the aircraft when it, it came in, it touched, it trapped. And then the next day when it launched off, it was still wonderful. It's not every day you get to make history, and we made history with the F-35C for the Navy as a whole. Ever since the invention of a laser, the world has envisioned a laser weapon system. The technology is real. We are proving it in the lab, and we're also moving it out into the field. 
and showing to ourselves and to our customers that this technology is real. You have speed of light delivery. You push a button, the laser's at the target immediately. You don't have a fly-out time. The munition is a precision beam of light that we point at the target, and we have a virtually unending supply. With our systems, you never run out of power. You can keep shooting as long as the adversary keeps throwing targets at you. There is a lot of mission space where the covert capability of the laser is also beneficial because you can cause an effect without there being any visible sign of what, what caused that effect. Lockheed Martin is the only company to have internally funded a 30 kilowatt laser weapon prototype. This is where science becomes a reality. We are actually in the process of building these high power laser systems, putting together in this lab, validating their performance there's a clear path to get to 100 kilowatts and even beyond that based on our present technical approach. The landscape is changing. We're seeing threats that are cheap, fast, and small and coming in from close range in large numbers. You really have to have exquisite eyes that you can see your targets with high fidelity to both put the laser beam there and to maintain it there sufficiently long. We've countered small rockets, UAVs, small boats, and a truck. Our warfighters need this capability to defeat these new emerging threats. We have all the core pieces now to be able to put together laser weapon systems. And so now we can envision complete laser weapon systems that can engage multiple targets with the speed of light with a very deep magazine that could be small enough, powerful enough, and capable to be carried on tactical platforms. So I really see laser weapons, kinetic weapons being side by side on the battlefield and together providing the defense that our forces need against traditional threats, kinetic weapons, emerging inexpensive proliferated threats, laser weapons.